see how dirty my kitchen is? Where is all the light at? I guess it's really dark this morning. Let me, uh, let me, uh, go somewhere else. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's go in the yoga craft room where there is more light. And now I have to go back and get my tea. Hey, sister! What you doing? My sister's on from D.C. Um, what you doing? Uh, I'm going to get my tea real quick. Still fiddling around this morning. I took a Benadryl because my allergies was kicking my butt. And them joints, I don't know how people take Benadryl during the day. Because that thing had me nodding in front of the TV. Felt like a crackhead. Um, well, no, I guess crack give you energy. I don't know. What make you nod? Something make you nod. Heroin? Anyway. Um... Good morning. We are here talking about our winter wellness and our hibernation. And I thought I was going to go out today and do some DoorDash because it was so beautiful yesterday. But I had a flat tire. <sighs> I mean, that's a whole nother story. But I had a flat tire. And I was just like, ooh, if it's this beautiful tomorrow, I'm going to go do some DoorDash. When I went to bed, it was supposed to be that beautiful. By the time I woke up, it's 37, snowing windy, all the things that say ear can happily stay in the house. But I am going to the boat show later on. Before I wanted to live on my bus, I wanted to live in a houseboat. Uh, but I'm still going to go to the boat show later on. That's what I'm going to do. One, because even though I'm talking about hibernation, I cannot allow the thought of being cold to keep me from being outside like that's just there's no reason for you to be running from the cold you don't even be that cold and then i'd be depressed that i don't go nowhere and i miss everything and honestly i have to tell myself when i go outside and i'm and i'm not dead and i make it I'm like oh you know what it's not as cold outside as i thought it's the same thing about getting up in the morning i hate getting up because I love to sleep. I can tell it's not right but just by the color. <laughs> That's how long I've been doing this. I can tell by the how much cream. Ugh, I can't. I still don't come. Okay. Um, you know, it's just like getting up in the morning. I hate getting up, but when I get up, I realize, oh, yes, I do. I can get up. It ain't that bad. Same thing with drinking water. Every time I drink water, I remember, oh, I do like water. Because I've told myself, I know you got to drop the kids off. What time is it? 7, 8? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. But, yeah, every time I drink water, because I told myself for so long that I hate to taste the water. And people are like, how you can hate to taste the water? It don't have no taste. Exactly. It's exactly why I hate the taste. Because it ain't got no taste. I had to put my tea bag back in there. I didn't let my chai. I didn't let my chai chai. My black tea is too strong. Here. Okay. So let's go back up here. And this is for all the people who think I live in the bus. No, I live in a beautiful apartment. It might be a little messy right there. But I live in a beautiful apartment. Not that I don't mind living in my bus. But when people ask me if I live in my bus, if you've seen the condition of my bus, would you want to live in a bus? I ain't got no toilet, y'all. I ain't got no water. Come on. Uh, but no, I live in a beautiful apartment. Actually, this is my environment. And I will uh, walk you through it on Friday. Actually, was the plan. Okay, so, um, environment. Making sure that you set up an environment for your success. Whatever that may be. You want to set up the things in place that's going to make you succeed in that thing. So here I am sitting in my yoga studio. Uh, there's my bolsters and there's my band of yoga blocks. 
What is that? Oh, that's a black yoga block I got. There's my bin of yoga blocks, and there's my restorative yoga bolsters over there. I'm getting ready for a handmaker's market, so I'm be making a whole bunch of clothes. So I'm about to set up my little sewing corner over there and finally finish these, repurpose these bottles that I've been collecting forever. Um, oh, like I said, I was going to do this tomorrow, but I guess I'm doing it now. Uh, here is my massage studio. That is, oh, why do I keep doing that? I could turn the camera around. Duh, uh. Oh, I got to open the thing. Sorry. So that is the massage studio. Had a massage yesterday. Um, that is the massage studio. This is my environment for healing. And so you set those things up. I don't come in here and chill out. I don't come in here and do anything but massage so that the energy in the environment can stay organic to its purpose. And now that I've got the camera turned around, like here's my bin of random exercise things and instruments. All my other instruments are on the bus. Uh, oh, y'all, my house is messy. Don't judge me. Oh, that light don't work. Um, uh, my plants, my babies. There's my babies. There's the mama of that baby, actually. That's the mama of that baby. I ain't gonna show you that kitchen is a mess. But look at this beautiful window right here. So this is my reading nook. And I sit in there and I took the lamp so that we could have more room for exercise. But this is my reading nook. This is my craft explosion cabinet. It is exploding with craft things. I had to fix my flat. See, there's my flat now fixed. Uh, but this is the reading nook. And so that's just to say, you know, you have to set up your environments to do what you need them to do for you. I can't do yoga in the TV room because I'd be too busy trying to watch TV. So I come out here or I, I like doing it in the reading nook sometimes too. That's, that's nice. Um, ooh, my bathroom is ridiculous. I can't wait to go take a bath. Uh, how do you create space when there is no space and your ADHD kicks in? So, actually, that's a good question. It's, nothing, it's not about having ADHD. It's about giving that, some, that thing some direction. Um, I don't know how much I... I have to do really more research into ADD, ADHD. I feel like a lot of those were umbrella terms. Um, and I feel like um, if there is a chemical reason on why you can't sit still or a hormonal reason why you can't focus, it's really about evaluating when that ADD, ADHD kicks in. It may be set off by a certain situation. I'm not very versed in... Um, <sighs> Oh, that plant sticking out my head looks funny. Um, I'm not very versed in ADD, ADHD. Thank you. I will go get learned some more on that because I would love to holistically help people and families that do deal with that. Um, so I don't know. I would have to look and see. But I, I know a lot of things are solved when you give it some focus. And I know that's the whole point of ADD, ADHD. ADD, ADHD is that it is hard to focus but it might be just that one task at the moment. So maybe you need to redirect your focus up away from what you can't focus on to something that you can harness your focus. And maybe you can bring that energy back over to what it is that you need to be doing. Um, I don't know. I apologize. I will, I will go do some more, some more study on that. Because... Um, that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, so, yeah, setting yourself up for success in, um, in the environment that you're, that you're in. Uh, what we were saying, where, we, where did we end off yesterday? Your brain, not your brain, your mind. Your brain is for thinking, your mind is for social-emotional development. Um... My friend Margaret Harris has my hair dreams, and I can't wait to get there. I just, these curls take so long to grow. Um, well, I was saying, yes, yeah, so it is your mind that is where your environment starts. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Hold on, let me see what time it is.
you know what? I actually don't care what time it is. I'm going to say what I got to say, and that's what it's going to be. Why? Because I can talk longer than 15 minutes if I want to. This is my show. <laughs> okay, so um, what I was going to say about the importance of your environment starting in your mind is uh, I used to be homeless. And I was homeless for 363 days. Yes, that's the exact number. 363 days I was homeless, y'all. I mean, straight up homeless. For the first six months of that, that was sleeping in my car, a Toyota Prius in Lincoln Park uh, Zoo, because that's the safest place I felt to be able to park and sleep um, overnight. Oh, Ooh, where'd I come from? Um, and then after that, I was able to move into a shelter uh, for the following six months. But you know why I made it out of that? First of all, I didn't get into it because I ain't had no money for an apartment. That was not the problem. Um, I didn't have any credit history, rental history, anyway, whatever. The reason how that happened, that I was able to pull myself out of that, is because I did not let the environment in my mind change. I knew this wasn't my life. And I continued to do everything that I could afford to do that kept me doing my normal life. I didn't focus on the fact that I was sleeping in my car. I didn't focus on the fact that I was taking baths at the uh park district in the freezing cold because ain't no warm water in those houses y'all at the pool house going way up to Sheridan because they got the nicest pool house where I could take a shower or thank God at the time I had a gym membership as well so I would go to the gym and take a shower and do whatever it was I need to do and pop up at work like nobody ever knew and then except I remember one time I did roll up somewhere and it was like damn yeah look like you live in your car and I just laughed I was like ah I know I'm I was going to the laundromat and some some something I think that's what I said those was those was my laundry clothes um but yeah <laughs> keeping the environment in my head fresh and positive uh allowed me to be able to pull myself I I could have went all the way into depression and never made my way out of homelessness homelessness and then became the mental uh, case and drug addict that they needed me to be to give me the help that I needed in the first place. But unleashing my own guru, because once again, I realized wasn't nobody coming for me. I wasn't a domestic abuse victim. I didn't have enough mental, I didn't have no real mental problems. According to them, I wasn't a drug addict. Uh, I had a job and I technically wasn't homeless because they said if I could sleep in my car, that was a roof over my head, y'all. That is, I said, lady, I have a kid. And she was just like, yeah, some people ain't got that. I was just like, wow. Okay, cool. Um, so environment starts in your head because if you are going to pull yourself through any tribulation, any trial, you better keep your head together because if you let your head fall apart, this wonky heart might lead you off somewhere and you might never find your way back. Yes, I, I live by my heart first, but I now know how to activate my brain and not just go off on my emotions. Um, and I don't mean like, you know, go off on my emotions. I do things out of love and passion and it might not be no support for me in doing those things and then I'm, I'm, I'm the one that ends up in a worse spot. But... Your brain, your mind is your first environment that you have to take care of, which is exactly why this is the perfect time at the Winter Wellness Workshop um, as we give you different tips and activations. Because like I said, you know all that you need to know. There ain't nothing else for you to know other than that you know what you need to know and maybe how to activate that. Because what we fail to understand is that Knowing is not enough, but sometimes it feels like it's enough because I can say the thing. I know the thing, so I must be doing it. That's not how that works. <laughs> That's not work. 
Uh, that's not how that works. How many Christians? Oh, yeah, I love Jesus. They say it out their mouth, but do you do anything other than say it out your mouth? Then Jesus probably feel different about your love. <laughs> I can't speak for Jesus, but I'm just saying. You have to do more than talk. Right? You have to do more than put the seed in the ground. Now, yeah, sometimes you can put a seed in the ground, depending on how hardy the uh, plant is. You can walk away, and it's still gonna um, it's still gonna grow. But for the most part, you know, you can't plant a seed in the ground and walk away. You have to continue to provide the right environment for it to grow. And then, not only for it to grow, can you be consistent and diligent enough to keep up with the care and patient because your fig tree. Your apple tree, your grapes, fruit trees, nut trees, you can't eat their, 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 the fruit that they bear the first few years. You're, you, you, either one, they don't produce any, or two, you're not supposed to eat it. You know, you have to, you have to keep, uh, cut it off, prune it before it gets to, to going so that it can actually be stronger and make actually good strong, uh, sweet or perfectly sour or whatever the thing is that is growing so that it makes a good product. Well, um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's the, that, that, yeah. So you have to continue to nurture and be patient and consistent and recognize that even if it is about your time, it's not going to happen on your time. It's going to happen when it's supposed to happen, but you must keep that environment welcoming. And that's where it starts first. And activations, and that is the thing. People are out here spreading all of this mindfulness, wellness crap. Um, and yes, I'm calling it crap because once it became an industry, it became crap. Uh, mumble jumbo. Uh, but once once you... Uh, shoot, what was, what was I answering? Oh, what does activation look like? So, right, that's the problem. Activation looks different for everybody. Because we are all capable of handling things in different ways. Some people cannot handle stress. I work great under stress. <laughs> that is when I do my best work. I'm like the superhero. Throw your light on. Here I come. I got you. Because um, I'm a MacGyver. <laughs> you know, whether I'm a MacGyver of emotion or a MacGyver of actual things. Um, I can, I can problem solve and put stuff together really fast. So for me, working under pressure and stress is no problem. For somebody else, that could be a, a different problem. But it also depends. If I have to choreograph a routine, that's too stressful for me to do overnight. And hopefully I'm doing it by myself and I can just freestyle and won't have to worry about teaching nobody else. But activations look different for everybody. And activation may look different for you. Every time during the same situation because we're always at a different space in ourselves. So today, I may be able to handle working under pressure. But tomorrow, I may not be able to handle working under pressure. So those two different days are going to have two different activations to help me get through. So there's nothing as linear. And that's why the more tools you have, the easier or the, maybe the uh, more opportunity you have to help control your environment and fix yourself. Unleash your own guru. That's what I do. Uh, because we know all that we need to know. We just need activations on how to make it come true in our lives. Listen. All right, so that's a good one. I'm going to have to answer this and I'm going to have to go because then I got to go do my workout. Uh, what about passion? How would passion play into what you want to happen versus what needs to happen? Um, so, I I only live off my passions. Um, and again, it's a, it's, let's see, how can I say this? What do you, what, versus what needs to happen? What needs to happen? What needs to happen? Okay, start with what needs to happen, whatever that is. And pick out the one thing about that journey that's going to make you excited about doing that thing. I'm passionate about living. So I can go to the laundromat <laughs> and be just as happy. 
Um, but luckily I got it right here in the crib, so I ain't got to go to the laundromat. But that, yeah, that's good. That's good. When you know what needs to happen, think of all the steps that it's going to take to make that thing happen. Which of those steps can you find some joy in? And just focus on either getting to that step or when you get to that step, of course, you're going to be happy and you make sure you do your best to continue to set yourself up uh, to complete the rest of whatever it is you're trying to do. Pa There's nothing wrong with passion. There's nothing wrong with passion. You just have to learn to sit on it sometimes. But if the goal that you're reaching for has to do with your greater passion, then you should be passionate even about those little steps. You know, I'm about to make a costume. Ugh, I hate the thrift store. That's not real. But if I did, <laughs> I would be happy about going to the thrift store and or the fabric store, notion store, and picking out all the things that's going to make my beautiful costume and da-da-da-da, come home, make my costume, and voila, there we have it. Be excited about every little step along the way if the greater picture is actually something you're happy about achieving or receiving thank you that was good i think that's going to be today's snippet um to share so let me recap what i just said and learn myself uh what needs to happen to get your passion to play into what you're doing think of the big picture generally Hopefully, the big picture is where you want to be and not just something you have to do for work or kids or whatever. Um, but look at the big picture of the something that you want to do. And true indeed, all the steps to get to that big picture may not be as exciting as the actual dream. Note it. Exactly. So, remember the big picture. And that way you can keep your excitement about the little things all the way along the way until you get to that big passionate thing. Be passionate, just as passionate as the kids say. Keep that same energy all the way through the process. Even if a piece of that process is something you don't enjoy. Don't focus on that piece of the process because you're get you 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 don't make that a stuck point, right? Because you're going over there. Don't get stuck right here thinking about the thing that you don't like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because the light in the kitchen was not good enough, I still need some more cream, and luckily, it's still very warm. So, I'm going to have to cut that out there, and we will continue some more looking around my house and talking about environment, uh, and wrap it up the second week of... <laughs> Dang, I thought I was going to make it through. The second week of a winter wellness workshop working on your environment um, if you missed mental because we're on environmental now but if you missed mental last week go run it back look through old IG and, and look at those uh, I gave up on Facebook I figured out what it was I think it said I needed to update my browser so I'm about to go do that now um, I love you too sis and uh, upload this for the Facebook people. And yeah. Next week. What are we talking about next week? Recreational. I have to look back at week one and see what I said. <laughs> see what I said. What order we were going to do this in. But thank you everybody. Thursdays are weird type, of, weird type of days. So go have yourself a great day anyway. Uh. I'm going to check in with y'all at the boat show. This is going to be exciting. Look at all these boats. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um...